Hi, welcome to this tutorial on basic mutations. So far, all we've done is fetch data in different ways and find better ways of fetching data. But this tutorial is different. We're going to learn how to actually create new Pokemon. Great, so let's start as usual by CDing into the right directory. And running yarn install. Now that we've done that, let's go ahead and open it up. So open up source, components, and you can see that we have this new card, add Pokemon card, which takes in some props and provides an input for the name, the URL, and then provides some buttons to save or cancel. So let's start by adding this new component into the Pokedex component. I'll go ahead and just steal the code for that. And now that we're asking for the trainer ID, let's go ahead and update our query to make sure that we get that information too. Similar to before when we used to click on a tile and get the Pokemon presented to us, we needed to add a new route for that. So down here, there's actually a new route that's been created for creating Pokemon. So likewise here, going back into Pokedex, this new component we added, the add Pokemon preview component, should do a similar thing. So let's open up add Pokemon preview, and I'll go ahead and copy the code again. Now when we click this link, we're going to go to this new route, passing in the trainer ID, which by the way is over here and we should get the add Pokemon card rendering when we do that. So before we move on, let's go ahead and make sure we paste in the right import. And now let's talk about mutations. So let's open up add Pokemon card. And right now this doesn't really do all that much. It displays a few text boxes, but let's define the mutation that's going to actually create the new Pokemon in the server. So let's look at the code for this. If we go ahead and paste this in down here, we can see that we have this mutation, create Pokemon, and the variables name, URL, and trainer ID are defined. So let's see what this looks like when we execute this in our graphical editor. I'll go ahead and comment this out for now. And let's first find what my trainer ID is. If I run this query, we can see that my ID is out here. This is my trainer ID. I'm going to copy that for now. Go back to this query, remove it, and uncomment this mutation. I'm going to remove the name, just call it a general mutation. And instead of defining these as variables, I'm just going to come up with some temporary values to test this out. Paste this in. And finally, for my trainer ID, go ahead and copy this and paste this in. Okay, so now I've just defined the create Pokemon mutation with the name test, a URL, and a trainer ID, which I figured out, which was mine, for the past query I did. Now let's run this and see what happens. Okay. In my response, which I've defined, the trainer ID, own Pokemon's ID, I now have four Pokemons. And if I look at my data browser, 
I refresh my page and I open up my data browser I can see I have a new Pokemon with the name test and this URL let's open up iTerm run yarn start and open up our local app we can see down here that we have the Pokemon I've just added. In other words, I've just created a new Pokemon by running that mutation in the GraphQL panel. So let's use this mutation in our app so that we can create Pokemon with the values provided through the interface. So we've put this mutation inside. Let's go ahead and wrap up this component with a mutation. You might be wondering around this point, we've defined these variables, but how exactly are we going to use them? How can we pass in the name, the URL, and the trainer ID into this mutation we've just defined? Well, the neat thing is that this mutation is made available via the props as a function that accepts these variables as parameters or as arguments. So we can go ahead and use this handle save hook over here to make use of this. Here we're deconstructing the state to take the name in the URL and assigning it to these name and URL variables. We're taking the trainer ID from the props, and then we're calling this.props.mutate, and this is the function that's been wrapped up that takes the variables, name, URL, and trainer ID, calls a mutation, and then in this case we pass in this anonymous function callback that essentially redirects us back to the home page. So this is all good news, and let's see if it works. As the app's running, and hot reloads enabled, we should be able to go straight back in, refresh the page just in case, we'll click the plus button, we'll add a name, test, and we'll just put in a fake URL for now. Okay, well nothing seems to have happened, let's try refreshing the page. And we can see that when we refresh the page, this so-called Pokemon, very lazy one without the image, has appeared. But why do we have to refresh the page? This is because we need to tell Apollo's cache that something's updated. In this case, the way we're going to do that is by assigning a unique ID to each object. Now if we add a new Pokemon, we see it's immediately added in. Okay, so in this tutorial we've learned how to create mutations, we've learned how to define mutations, use them in our app, and also understand how to pass variables into mutations. See you in the next tutorial where we'll talk even more about mutations. Thanks for watching.